If you followed along with the December 23rd coding exercise, we walked through how to create a set of random numbers. If I click on solutions, you can see right here that we created an array of 20 items uh, ranging from 0 to 999 using the RAND method. Now, I mentioned in there that my tests were not perfect for this because if you look, all I'm essentially doing is I'm creating two calls to random numbers and then ensuring that each one of them is equal to 20 items, which by doing new 20, it's going to do that. But then also I expect that set one would not equal set two. And part of the problem with that is that in computer science, random numbers will run into each other. There will be conflict. So it's not going to happen very often, but there will be times where this test will actually fail because we don't actually know what random numbers are being generated. So in this exercise, I want to kind of take that knowledge and say, how could we create a method where we would know the sequence of the numbers? And it's gonna give us the ability to learn about a very cool library called the Fiber Library in Ruby. So first, let's do a little review on randomness. So if I create a random call to 10, this is gonna give me the numbers zero through nine each time. So here you can see it's five. If I run it again, it's nine, run it one more time, and it's 12. So everything there is pretty basic. Now, I want to give you a little bit of a secret if you don't really have a computer science background. One thing you may not be aware of is there's no such thing as true randomness inside of any kind of programming language or computers at all. Computers don't have the ability to do something random. They have to be told exactly what is happening. And so the process for this in terms of random methods is there is a seeding process, which means that there is a specific set of numbers that are passed into the randomness and that is what gets pumped into the random algorithm and that is what makes it seem like it's random. So it let's and you don't have to take my word for it because in Ruby we can override the seed. So and in fact before I do that let me actually come here and just so you know I'm not lying let me come and I'm going to save this and we're going to do three calls to random. Now the first time it's 870, the next time 928, third time 610. So far that's looking pretty random. But what we can do is we can actually define our own seed and that is what can allow us to come and to know what sequence is going to be generated. And the method for doing that is called SRAND. So if I do srand and set that to 1, now watch what, watch what happens. If I run this, it's 5, 8, and 9. If I run it again, look at that, 5, 8, and 9, run it again, still 5, 8, and 9. By defining the seed, and you can see it right here, this is the generated seed value, and by hard coding this in, that essentially locks the randomness in place. And it's technically, it's still random. We have calls to the random method three times right here. So it is random, but by hard coding the seed, the randomness is now locked and we can know what it is. So this gives us kind of the first part of knowing how all of this works. And just as an interesting side note, because I find these kind of things kind of interesting, is think about gambling. So if you are building a program for po online poker or for blackjack or craps or you know something like that, randomness is incredibly important. And there have been times where individuals have figured out what the seed value that was being used was. And by simply knowing the seed value, they were able to start to know what 
items were going to be generated. So if it was playing a craps game, they would know what items were going to be landed on, what colors were going to be landed on. They made a ton of money till they got caught and arrested because that is not legal, but still very interesting. So that is how randomness works in computer science. So that's the first part. And if I clear this out and come down here and delete everything, let's see how we could implement this. We need to have some type of number here. And if we look at our test, you can see that what I'm doing with the test is I'm creating a random sequence variable and then I'm storing whatever the value of pseudo random is and it takes one argument of three. That is going to be the number of items that we want generated. And then our expectation is that when we call random sequence, which is our variable right here, and then call dot resume, that it will start and generate a set of numbers that are random, but they're random with a hard-coded sequence. So this is what the test is looking for. Now, if you were to come into the method, you may think, okay I this is easy I can just call or I can call srand one and then call rand and call this at, say 100 now this will not work and I'll show you why right here so if I go pseudo random and if there is no reason for the argument I'll do it just so it doesn't have an error and now say run it Okay, so far so good. It gave us our first number. So this seems like it's working, but now run it again. It gives us 37 again. Run it again, it gives us 37. And the reason is because this method has no concept of state, meaning that if you run it once and then run it again, it doesn't know that it was already run one time. So it's just gonna keep on calling this process over and over again. And because this item right here on line five is always going to be 37 then with this as the hard-coded seed, then this is not going to work. We want the ability to have a dynamic number of elements and then to be able to call on this and then have that return the result. Now I kind of gave the answer away a little bit here by saying resume. If you Googled Ruby and resume, then you probably have already figured out the answer here. But what we're gonna do is we're going to leverage the fiber library. And the fiber library is really cool. I was excited when I was working through and building this exercise because I've been wanting to show you guys about fibers, but I have not really had a good case study that wasn't convoluted. I like giving something that I feel like you could potentially use in real life. And so far I was having a hard time coming up with something fun and practical until today. So this is, uh, this is, I think, a really good fit for it because anytime you have a situation like this where you have some process that you wanna call, but you wanna easily remember the state of it, Fibers can be a really cool way of managing that. So before we get into our implementation, let's actually build a very small fiber. So what a fiber does is we can say fiber equals fiber.new do because it takes a block. And then inside of this, I can say something like 10 times do fiber dot yield, which if you remember, yield is something we have because this is in a block. So every time that this is called, then we can say puts and uh, we can just, for the sake of being easy, we can say puts, hey, and that's it. And, and actually, you know what, instead of that, let's actually use our RAND. So I'm going to say RAND 100. So now if I come down here, I can say fiber if I can spell today, resume. And now if I run this, you can see it prints out on the very bottom 12. If I do it again, prints out 12, 12, and 12. So we're able to call resume 
each time. Now our number is not changing, but that's because of some other things we have set, like calling pseudo random here and that kind of thing. But what we have is the ability to store state, which is going to be illustrated much better right here. So I'm going to come here, cut this, and now we can just come and paste this in. I'm going to get rid of our call to rand 100, and then I also need to get rid of this. Okay, so this is the start of what we need to do. We have our pseudo random method. I'm going to define and hard code our seed, and then I'm going to create our fiber. Now, I don't have to make any changes here. We're just creating a fiber. If you're coming from another language that has threads, Fiber is a little bit safer way of using threads. It's a way of storing a process that can maintain its state, which for our case, what it means is that it can go, it will maintain the value of our pseudo random number generator. So I can say fiber equals fiber new do. Instead of 10, I'm going to pass in our number variable. So this is going to say, I want you to create this number of random items. If we pass in pseudo random three, it'll create three random numbers. If I pass in pseudo random 100, it'll create a hundred random numbers, but they'll always follow the exact same sequence. And they'll now, because we're storing it in a fiber, they'll actually maintain the state. So here, I'm gonna say fiber yield, and then I'm just gonna say rand. 100, hit save, and I believe this is all I need to do. Let's test it out. So if I say pseudo random 10, then I'm gonna store this in a variable. So I'll just store in a variable called i, and now I should be able to say i resume, and let's copy this and paste it a few times. Now if I run this, there we go, look at that. Now we have the ability to store the state. And because I created 10 items, I can do this if I wanted to. And it'll keep on giving us more random numbers, but if you run this over and over again, it's going to keep on generating the exact same sequence. So this is a very handy thing, especially if you're building automated tests and you need the ability to know what numbers and what sequence you're gonna get when you are building something like that out. So let's run our test to verify that this is working. I'm gonna say RSpec January 12th, and there you go. One example, zero failures. So now you've learned a few things. You've learned about the unrandomness of random, how you can override how random works in Ruby. You've also learned about fibers, how you can maintain state of an object. And then we've also talked about some of the various ways that you can call fibers and so that you can generate your own very targeted, very specific random number sequence. So great job.